What's up? I'm Quackers Co. and I hope you like caviar. This is the fish fry for October 18th and it's being held at Sockeye Station. Our cookware for this rotation is the Splattershot Junior, the Splatana Wiper, the Mini Splatling, and the Splat Charger. At this point, we should be so used to painting these walls and being used to using them instead of the walkways. The walkways are only for the salmonids. We should just be swimming through walls and using all of our different movement variables. Sockeye Station also has plenty of corners to cut. Keep an eye out for them, and if you're on the run, use them to your advantage. And the combination of swimming through that tower grate and using walls to get your ink back works fantastically. If you find any eggs here by the basket on this low wall, Bomb Strafe or Squid Roll will get them instead of jumping down there. And of course, you can throw an egg from anywhere on the shoreline to the top of the tower. If you find yourself on a high tide or a low tide, just know that those sides are used for different reasons. On a high tide, they're better utilized for an exit strategy and then making a move on a shoreline boss. On a low tide, they're used for making moves on shoreline bosses and should be rarely used for making an escape. And if you find yourself in a fog occurrence, those shoreline bosses will be missed. So lure whatever you can to the basket, especially a goldie. And if you do, just know you can attack while you're basketing those eggs. There's no reason to cut out the damage output of your team just because you want to collect those eggs. And this weapon composition is a little weird for a Quahog charge. So make sure if you have one of the weapons that has a good ratio of mobility to damage output, that you push towards that shoreline to collect those eggs and run them. Everybody that has that slower fire rate, like the Splat Charger, should focus on getting into that turret and supporting your teammates and taking out bosses. For a Glowfly's occurrence, I found the most success on chilling here about two thirds to halfway up the tower wall. Since we have the Splat Charger with piercing damage, whoever's being targeted can chill right there by that tower wall while the Splat Charger chills behind them. And as they line up, you can cause massive damage. Then if either of you get bumped off, you can climb right up that wall. This location has a better scattering of eggs, and with that wall, it gives people a lot of opportunity to get their ink back up to toss those eggs into the basket. And just like with grillers, it's really nice to get those eggs as close to the basket as possible, but you'll find yourself over on a small fry. There's usually a weapon in every single rotation that works really well against small fry. This one is the Splattershot Junior. So as long as someone focuses on taking out lessers and keeping distance from each other, that way a team wipe doesn't happen instantly. And then when one person is targeted by two grillers and there's a lot of eggs, get onto that wall, get those grillers away from everyone else. For a mothership on Sockeye, whenever we have a long range weapon, it's helpful to get to the top of that tower, causing damage to the mothership while it's on its way there, and then hitting the top of the mothership while it's at the basket to splat Chinooks and drop eggs by the basket. And if you have a short range weapon, try to focus on one side at a time. Then as the mothership approaches, move your way closer to the basket, taking out those boxes and any lessers that may get in your way while you're taking the mothership out. And a nice tip for twist around, since we have the Splat Charger, try to be the one closest to the basket. Then when all of the lessers start to drop down, move them into a train, that way you can maximize the piercing damage. It'll be helpful if you have a high DPS weapon to support two taking out Cohawks, since the Splat Charger can't take them out in one shot. And Mud Mouths are probably one of the easiest waves, but keep in mind that if no one deals with those lessers, you will be taken out. And since Golden Mud Mouths send out Cohawks, all damage is needed to take out lessers. So if you see someone that's focusing on taking out those lessers, try to make sure that you use wall hangs and other methods of moving the lessers into better areas so that those bombs can get put into those mouths. Occurrences are all about teamwork, and if you're one of those people that happens to not use your specials, if you're on one of these occurrences, try to make sure you use it before things get too bad. All right, let's get to the cookware. Our first tool is the Splattershot Junior. 
The Splattershot Jr. is more like the Aerospray MG Jr. With its very widespread and insane fire rate, it can send out a lot of damage and a lot of paint. But if you get too close to something, you're going to find yourself in trouble. So no matter what, if you're pushing anything, make sure you give yourself an exit strategy. Think about where that bomb is going to land and keep an eye on your backside. And try to find those moments where you can really get in close and cause all that damage. Or those moments where you need to keep your distance and send massive damage out to a horde. Our next tool is the Splatana Wiper. The Splatana Wiper has much better damage and paintability when you use the charge shot. But there are some enemies where that quick shot could be really useful, like Small Fry or Fish Sticks. But you'll find the quickness of that charge shot to be very useful on taking out stillheads on a single cycle. Or for taking out multiple buckets of a stinger. But with a weapon like this, since all the damage is so straightforward, make sure that you don't let anything sneak up on you. Keep moving around and use the awesome mobility that this weapon provides. The third weapon of this rotation is the Mini Splatling. The Mini Splatling has a very quick charge, and its fire rate is insane. This weapon can support more of an aggressive playing style than any other of the Splatlings. But since its range is so much shorter than the others, it's going to take a while to get used to it. So you're going to find yourself getting closer to that shoreline. So make sure you keep this weapon topped off on ink. This weapon is very good at having just enough ink to throw a bomb, as well as after throwing a bomb, enough ink to completely charge it up and take something out. But don't get tunnel vision. This weapon's great for taking out lessers. The last weapon of this rotation is the Splat Charger. The Splat Charger probably has the best balance in my mind of range, damage, and charge time. Once you get everything down on this weapon, it works really great. And its range works perfect for Sockeye Station's tower. So try to make sure you stay on that tower, because odds are if you spend too much time off of it, you're going to find yourself with a splat. And even half charges with this weapon paint all the way to the bottom of walls. So I promise you, Practice with this weapon, get used to how long it takes to charge, and you'll find it a very useful tool for frying up those fish. Just remember to use that piercing damage and keep your distance. And remember that the fish fry comes out before the stage rotation. So if you want to catch these updates while they're hot and fresh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want other fellow Grizzco employees to receive these tips, make sure you like and share the video. Bye bye